Hi, welcome back to the channel. My name is Ian Okumu. In today's fast-paced world of software development, writing clean and maintainable code usually is crucial for project success. However, writing code is just one part of the equation. Documenting your code is equally as important. Documentation usually serves a guide for developers who work on the code base, helping them understand the structure, purpose, and its functionality. There are several reasons why you should document your Kotlin code. Documenting your code clarifies its intent and usage. It makes it easier for other developers to understand you. Well-documented code is way easier to maintain and update over time. It reduces the learning curve for a new team member joining the project. Documentation serves as a reference point for troubleshooting and debugging. It helps developers usually identify the root cause of issues very quickly. For libraries and APIs, documentation is mandatory. It defines the contract between the provider and the consumer. It outlines how you interact the code and what to expect in return. Sometimes even for feature reference, documentation acts as a record of design decisions and rationale behind certain implementation choices. It provides valuable context for feature enhancements or modifications. Right here, we have a project. I'm calling it Password Manager. It's a very simple CLI-based password managing tool. It uses exposed framework for database manipulation. I'm currently using SQLite as my database engine. This project contains a few things. Let's go through what it has. We have our main Kotlin file. This will define our application logic. Once a user enters an input and so on and so forth. There are several methods inside that each represent some rendering on the CLI. The main method is whatever is usually run. Main page is the method that renders the welcome message and takes input for authentication redirects. I have an enum class. I have an auth page. This displays the authentication page. We also have a home page. Inside our util package, we have a util file. This contains a utility object for password related operations, including serialization and verification. I also have a generating random UID function. Lastly, I have an account cred function. This displays an individual account credential item in the formatted manner. I also have the data package, which contains three different files. We have the database. This has several functions. One, connection to the database. Two, tables that represent entities within the database. It also has different methods of operations on databases something on an insert statement, an update statement, and so on and so forth. I also have a model file, which contains two data classes that represent information within the application. I also have a repository file. This file has functions and classes that represent how we interact with our database. Documentation within code comes in various formats. Most people use comments as the primary way of documenting their projects. However, there are other means and methodologies you can apply. A common one is naming conventions. Your naming conventions, it should indicate how your code is supposed to function. For our case, we are going to speak about documentation from a comments perspective. Our applications, methods, and classes have been well documented with comments. However, if you're on a large scale project, it might be very difficult to go through the entire code base. However, we can shorten the process through which one can go through the entire code base by putting out our entire documentation on some public format. At times, we want our comments to be provided in a readable format, not just on the editor itself, but on some external tool, for example, a web page or markdown. Introducing Docker. Docker is an API documentation engine for Kotlin, and just like Kotlin itself, Docker usually supports mixed language projects. It understands Kotlin's KDoc and even Java's JavaDoc. Docker can generate for you documentation in multiple formats. This includes HTML, multiple flavors of Markdown, and Java's JavaDoc HTML. Several pre-existing Kotlin libraries right now use Docker for their API reference. This includes Coroutines, Ktor, OKHttp, Hexagon, and even Bitmovin. Docker can be run using Gradle, Maven, or from the command line. To get started with Docker, 
we first need to apply the Gradle plugin for Docker in the root build script of your project. If you're documenting multi-project builds, you can apply the Gradle plugin within sub-projects as well. There you go. Let's have our project build and then run our task. Once our build completes, you can generate HTML documentation using Docker by running the following Gradle task. Docker will generate documentation for your project. After the build completes, you can run the file that is generated in your build folder. There is an index.html file. We can open this. As you can see, there is some HTML that has been generated. We want to see this in the browser. Therefore, I will just run this index.html file on my Chrome browser. This is the page that has been generated by Docker. The page contains several pieces of information. At the very top, we will have the name of our project with the project version. It will also indicate the source sets that are being run within this project. Our project is built on the JVM. It also has a theme switching button. Light mode and dark mode are both supported. On the left panel, we can see a set of sub-menus. These are arranged according to our packages. Within the root package, we have our auth op. Once you click on it, we get some documentation about what our auth op requires. Same case for auth page. This was our authentication page function. As you can see, there is some documentation on there and the function signature is also produced. Home page as well, main, main page, and so on and so forth. Even our packages, like the data package, we had different data classes. An example is account auth. This is a data class representing account authentication information. We have our auth repository. We have our base repository, and so on and so forth. This is very easily and well-documented code that you can use within your project. The Gradle plugin for Docker comes with HTML, Markdown, and Javadoc output formats built in. It adds a number of tasks for generating documentation, both for single and multi-project builds. This will generate a multi-module documentation in HTML output format. We're going to look at that in the second episode of this video. You could also use some experimental formats like GitHub flavored Markdown. To generate this, we use Docker GFM for GitHub flavored Markdown. If you wanted to generate the documentation in Javadoc format, we would say Docker Javadoc. And even in Jekyll compatible Markdown format, we can use Docker Jekyll. By default, generated documentation is located inside build folder slash docker slash the format. However, the output location, among other things, can be configured. To configure the directory, we will need to add a docker HTML task or for whichever docker configuration you want. Let's try doing one for HTML. We can configure where the output of the HTML generated can go. This can be done by output directory. Dot set layout dot build directory then we can put it inside documentation slash docker or if you want to specify the format slash HTML you can also configure the tasks and output formats at the same time within here we can have our different configurations. Docker has many configuration options to tailor to your and your reader's experience. You could have general configuration, configurations for source sets, source link configuration, package options, external documentation links, and even having a complete, document, a complete configuration for your application.
In the next video, we will speak about the different configuration options that you can use with Docker. See you in the next video.